first question is, why would I need to complete this government claim? What is this anyway? Well, as, as you all know, you probably have had a friend or a friend of a friend or something have a child get hurt at school. And although it's surprising that it rolls out this way, sometimes parents don't get notified of these injuries at the time. Oftentimes there's kind of like, well, nobody knows how this happened. We're not even sure it happened at school. But if the injury is significant and you, you are contemplating the possibility of a future lawsuit against the school district for personal injuries, you have to file this government claim. So why would I you know, need to file a government claim? Well, let's say your student had a head injury at school. Um, that might be something that you don't know how it's going to resolve and to what extent it's going to resolve. And you might need some time to treat to be able to figure that out. So if you file the government claim on behalf of your child and on behalf of yourself, that protects you in the event that you want to sue. For an adult, the government claim has to be filed within six months of the occurrence. And for minors, uh, you can file up to a year after the occurrence, although that's a late claim. It's better to get them in in six months. So we wanted to give people a look at the government claim so that they could see what kind of information is required. And these, these forms are made to be filled out by a lay person. Um, our clients oftentimes, you know, will complete them for them, but that's not really necessary. If you look at the LAUSD claim form, you can see that they ask for your name and address, and they want uh, specific dates on which the injury occurred. That's pretty important in terms of calculating when the claim begins to run from. They want the name and address of all district persons involved in the incident, where it occurred, what happened, and the names of all witnesses and addresses and telephone numbers, the name of doctors consulted with, and that's all stuff that's you know going to be readily available um, to the client. So this is something which sometimes comes up for us, like we'll get somebody in whose kid, let's say whose kid has been excluded from school for a month or two and the reasons don't entirely make sense to us. Um, we might file a claim under those circumstances, but more typically we're gonna use the claim form when people are actually injured at school. Uh, sometimes their injuries aren't that bad, but they're upset about what happened. You file the, the government claim and then you don't really have to worry that, oh, the client, if they want to sue later, they won't be able to. Now, once the entity gets the government claim, they have 45 days to either accept or reject it. And if they reject it, then that gives rise to a right to sue. If 45 days goes by and they accept it, that implies that they're going to be paying for your injuries. But I've never had that happen. And then there are cases where 45 days go by and there's no answer. That operates as a rejection. So once the rejection occurs, you have 180 days to file the lawsuit. It's a short statute of limitations. The thinking is if a public entity is going to be sued, that they have a right to notice and they have a right to a fairly quick process so that they can kind of keep the books clean. So that's what the government claim is for. Okay. And then uh, that's what it's for. But when you were talking last week about how you do it, I, mm -hmm. A lot of it was sailing over my head. So how do we okay. do this? Okay, well, what I would do, let's say I'm in the Saugus Unified School District, as you once were, Shannon. I would take the LAUSD form and use it to create my own template. And wherever it's in Los Angeles Unified School District and that's for an address, I would substitute, you know, the Saugus Union School District or whatever they're called. And I would fill out the form, and I'd turn it in. But where? But um, I. But I'm sorry. This is how like literal I'm being. Like, where do you turn it in? Well, the LAUSD form has an address on it that they want you to to, to turn it in. I think for other districts, you could call and ask. You know, do I send it to the superintendent's office, or is there some other specific place that the claim forms are supposed to go? So you. I mean, you could certainly serve it on the superintendent. Sometimes they'll write you back and say, send it to our risk manager. I mean, they have all different policies just depending on the district. 
And so you turn it, you turn it into them. Do you need to mm -hmm. retain? Obviously, you need to keep a copy of it because if you've turned Always. it into them, Always. and then the legal document. And then what happens? Well, that's when they review the claim and they either accept it or reject it or they let it lapse. But after the forty-fifth day, it gives rise to a right to sue, and then you can sue them. But see, what what can happen is somebody can show up here and say. A year and a half ago, my son had a very bad head injury, and he's still not the same. And I'd like to sue the district for his head injury because he fell off the jungle gym at school and hit his head. We say, okay, uh, where's your government claim? And they say, what's that? Okay. So, you know, it's a short statute of limitations, and, and so you, you have to observe those requirements if you want to sue a district okay, or, so, any, or any public entity. I mean, you could be suing the Metropolitan Water District or you could be suing Santa Monica, uh, you know, rent control board. I mean, it, it just depends on where the injury occurred. But you don't, okay, here's what's confusing to me and I'm sorry, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm being That's so okay. dense, but normally what I know about law fills a thimble, right? But normally if you have to file a claim or something, you have to go to a courthouse or you have to go to the public library or you have to go to the... Uh, you, no, 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 no. So You're this talking is not about the... a complaint. Okay. You're talking about a complaint. Got it. A cause of action. This is not a complaint. It is a claim form. And it's you give like... that to the person that would ultimately be the person you would sue. You keep a copy for yourself and all that claim form, that, that form does is allows you to be able to sue them down the road. Correct. And when you said you give a copy of the claim to the person that, you know, injured you, well, no, you're giving a copy of the claim to a representative from the, the, from the governmental entity, in this case, the school district, who's responsible for your injuries. Okay. They're made up, you know, it's not like you take it and you give it to the teacher and you go, hey, your negligent supervision is prompting me to, you know, provide you with a claim form. It's to put the municipality or the district or the governmental entity on notice that a member of the public is going to be suing them. Okay, and so maybe it's as simple as calling the district office and say, who takes your government claims? Correct. Okay. And I mean, we've had situations where we've served them on, on the person that we thought was the right person, maybe like the superintendent or the compliance officer or the person in charge of risk management. And then at least one instance, they called back and they said, we have a different form, you need to fill out a different form. So we had to transfer everything to a different form. But yeah, that part's not usually hard. Okay. And when you can see, but then you use a legal term like serve it on somebody, but you're just saying you uh, walk okay, up to well, them. that was a mistake. You, well, no, no. To physically, <laughs> you either mail it in by certified mail or you walk it in and you get somebody to sign for it. Okay. It, so it, it, doesn't, it does not involve a process server, and I'm glad you asked that question. Okay. Because, uh, you know, it sounds all official, but that sounds very doable and very capable. So you yeah. hand it in to them, and the, uh, you said something about 45 days. Yes, so they have 45 days to respond to the claim. That's okay. the max. And if you don't um, hear from them in 45 days, it acts as a rejection, and then you, it gives rise to a right to sue. If they answer and reject the claim, it gives rise to a right to sue. If they say they're going to pay it, you're in a whole different discussion that I've never had, and I probably never will have because I don't think they usually agree to pay. But uh, at that point, from the 45th day, Forward, you have 180 days to file your lawsuit if it's on behalf of a parent and for a child you get an extension of a year up to a year if you file a late claim but it's better to file both within six months your lawsuit I mean the parent isn't going to file the lawsuit all this is going to mean is that when the parent finds a lawyer that wants to take the case they're not going to be precluded from bringing the action because they didn't give this the district notice in the form of a claim but even now, if it, let's say a year later something happens and having ha even though you can't do anything about that paper now the fact that you had to file one before does that make a difference no no each injury okay. gives rise to a new requirement of a new claim form oh, so there's nothing and, and, you, and you will lose the right to sue unless you sue within six months Six months. So once you, so once that forty-five days has lapsed, that's lapsed. That's when the six months starts. Correct. One hundred, one hundred eighty days. Yeah. Okay. So what does that end up being? It's less than a year from from the date of the incident. Well, it's better to think about it in terms of 
the right the initial requirement of the 40 of the claim and then once the claim is rejected or it's not responded to you have 180 days okay. i mean there are there are calculators you know that you can use on the internet but these are days it's not it's not uh court days you know it's days okay um and what we have to be careful about is we have to calendar the, the, the 45th day so we can talk to the parent and say, hey, listen, or the 100, not the 45th day, we have to calendar the 180th day so that when they're, they're getting close, we can say, are you going to do something or not? Right. And then how long, so let's say the incident happened yesterday. How okay. long do I have to get that claim form in? 45 days, 44 days. Okay, so I have 44 no, days. No, 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 I'm sorry, I misspoke. You have, six, you have six months. So I have six months to get... Six months from the date of injury. To get... A year if you're a minor. To get the claim form in. Correct. Then they have 45 days to respond. Correct. And then I have, a hun I have six months after that before I have to sue. Yeah. I, I feel like I just took a law class. Uh, <laughs> And then I got well, a, like and then I got math, a solid actually. C. <laughs> it's actually, math. Uh, okay. All very doable. All very important if you if you do have a serious injury. Like we have a student now. He's actually a general ed student. Um, he and another boy were kind of play fighting in class, and then it turned into real fighting, which might not be the best idea in class. Anyway, his teacher got involved, and somehow his leg got broken. Oh. That's when we had to. That's when we had to file a, a claim for him. They're for, they're for personal injuries that occur at school. Wow. And they do occur at school. Of course and, they you do. Know, some, and sometimes it's like, hey, that kid who's in my son's class bit him and broke the skin. You know, it's not always negligence on the part of the school. You know, or it could be my daughter. I had a case once where a special ed student was, you know, raped at school. I mean, different oh. stuff happens. Okay. And, and... If we're, I mean, obviously, if there's something of that magnitude that's happening, you need to make sure that you're filling out these forms. But if it's something where your child is bit at school, you're saying we should also take it seriously, file the form, because if something happens later, you won't be able to do something. Mm, well, if somebody bites you and breaks the skin, there's a risk of infection. When I gave you the example of the person with the head injury, mm -hmm. those concussions can be pretty unpredictable. Yeah. So it's it's something where you might not want to sue, but let's say it turns out your your kid's going to need a lot of care. Yeah. Expensive care. You you don't know for sure which way it's going to go. It might all resolve. It might not. So it's protective in that sense. Other times. You know, people feel very strongly that the school wasn't supervising properly and their kid got injured. It could be a sports event. It could be a playground. It could be something different. But any interest that anyone has in filing a lawsuit against the district for personal injuries has to be preceded by one of these claims.